Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, May 10th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in. Space weather headed our way in just a few days. But the big story, heavy snow predicted for the mountains. Holy macaroni. Is it mid-May? Keep calm. It's boom time. Cold and rain kicks off the week as snow-filled storm passes over Yampa Valley. Did we tell you that heavy snow is predicted for the mountains? Holy macaroni. Denver weather rained today before unusual mid-May snow. Ho, ho, ho. Get your hole, Al. Snow in the Denver metro area in May is not uncommon, but it usually happens before Mother's Day. This year will be different with a good chance of rain changing to snow Monday night. Yes, that's now. The chance for rain on the urban corridor will get better in time on Monday. The chance will reach 90% during the afternoon and evening. We're talking about snow. Ho, ho, ho in the Denver metro. Could be the coldest ever in almost a decade. We'll see. Let's see what the mainstream says. No accumulation is not very common for Denver in May. It's only happened once in the past five years, but this storm has no accumulation. What did he say? No snow. Oh. Snow accumulation is not very common for Denver in May. It's only happened. What? So we're going to commercial already? Snow accumulation. We're going to have to let this parse up for a minute. Stick with us. We're the best channel on the internet, for goodness sakes. And we're bringing you on satellite some of the hardest stuff to parse up. So patting my back now and is not very common for Denver in May. It's only happened once in the past five years, but this storm has a high chance of bringing some measurable snow by Tuesday morning. There only has to be a tenth of an inch to qualify for a measurement. Denver does average 1.7 inches of snow in May. The last time it happened was 2019 when 3.9 inches fell at Denver International Airport. There's usually just a little bit more spring snow at Denver's official weather station compared to the city, which is a couple hundred feet lower in elevation. If Denver does get enough to measure on Tuesday, it would also be one of the latest snows in recent years. Here are the dates of final snow over the past 10 years. May 11th would be tied for third latest. With that late snow possible, it could also be one of the longest snow seasons in Denver history. We started out the season with one of the earliest snows on record with one inch on September the 8th. Tuesday, if there is measurable snow, would mark 246 days from the first snow to the last snow. That would make it the second longest snow season in the 138-year history of Denver snow records. The 1974-75 season went on for 258 days, finally ending on May 29th. Meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen, 9 News. Well, 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 May 9th. Well, that could be our plight. And, and what we're seeing here is an increase in the er early snow and the late snow, moving that snow 246 days. That's only 100 days without snow in Denver. Now, normal weather gets an official update. This is not only happening in Denver. We just showed you the official update that there is, this is going to be the second longest snowiest season since records been, have been kept. It's happening more extreme to the north. And what I'm talking about here is... Joining me now, Dan Bongino, oh, host of the Dan please. Bongino. Please, Dan Bongino, shut the fluck up. And just further to confuse things. So what we're talking about here, the National Weather Service released a new 30-year average temperature and precipitation ben benchmarks for western Montana. After four consecutive cycles of warming, Missoula, Montana, has cooled for an average annual temperature, and it's gotten a bit more snowy. So it's getting colder in Montana and longer snow as well. That seems to be a pattern. Are you picking it up? We just put it down. How unusual is this chilly May? Snow in Ohio and Pennsylvania yesterday, and those are Mother's Day snows. So how unusual is it? Well, snowflakes in May are unusual, even for a persistent and unpredictable Cleveland weather. But they made an appearance Sunday for a second straight year in the land. 
The latest Cleveland has ever had measurable snow was May 11, 2020, with 0.2 inches. And the National Weather Service meteorologist Raylene Campbell, before last year, the latest measurable snow was May 10th, and back in 1902 and 1907, during the centennial minimum. So this is pretty bizarre weather we're having. Snow on May 9th in Cleveland. So there's that. It's some of the most bizarre weather ever happening. Now, what snow means for your garden tonight? Well, if you're in the northern tier near Michigan, it means it's anything that's a warm weather crop is going to freeze and you're done unless you cover those crops. Daffodils, tulips can handle light snow, but other more sensitive varieties in your garden like tomatoes and peppers will not because the leaves and stems of those fruit plants are composed mostly of water. A freeze will decimate its cell structure and kill your crops. So cover them up because there is definitely a frost and freeze warning across 11 states. Isolated thunderstorms and heavy rains from the southern plains to the southeast. Like a beast, isolated strong and severe storms capable of producing large hail. Damaging wind gusts may occur across parts of southern plains into the southeast. Heavy rains may cause localized flash and urban small stream flooding in the southern plains across the lower Mississippi Valley. But the big story is elevated fire risk in the northern Sierras and frost and freeze warnings across a dozen states. Northern Pennsylvania, all of western New York, all of Michigan, hard freeze. I hope you didn't plan early. Wisconsin, same 30% of the state in hard freeze warnings. Frost and freeze warnings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Boom! 13 states as we enter summer. What a bummer. Now let's check out the snowfall amounts. Take a look. Upstate New York, western New York, Cleveland, just east of Cleveland, still showing snow on the ground. One, two, three inches. Schleville, Schlevazel. Like a nozzle. And that was as of 7 a.m. There's more snow coming. Take a look. More snow coming to New York, Maine, potentially Vermont. But we're only going out here 78 hours, hours of powers. And the only thing that matters is this first uh, 18 hours. That's it. In the next 18 hours, we're going to see heavy snow dumps in eastern Colorado. 16 plus in some regions, but averaging 6 to 12 inches for hundreds of square miles. So... We're going to keep a close eye on that. Western Montana also picking up big totals. Big totals up in Alberta. Like a shmurda. It's not even a word. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Most me recent rocker just hit right here in the Kiru Islands. 35 kilometers. 4.7. Nothing else spectacular. Normal activity. Worldwide volcano news update. Nuvado de Chilan. Is that even really a volcano? Because... I've just been reporting on the word. I don't even know if it's real. Captain and Tennille. Where are my blue blockers? Oh, there they are. Holy macaroni. Samaru, Sinabong, Sabankaya, Pakaya. They all rhyme. Sabankaya, intermit intermittent ash to 23,000 feet. Nevados de Chilon just puffed out to 14,000. Samaru to 14,000. Sinabong to 10. Pretty standard activity, nothing spectacular. Now, what is spectacular is the uptick in cycle, solar cycle 25, long duration sea flare we reported on yesterday on Oppenheimer uh, Magnetic Reversal News. And here we have another long duration B flare happening now. What does that mean for you? Well, let's see what it says. A faint partial halo CMO was observed on May 10th following an earth facing filament eruption. That's not what happened. The CME four hours later was what produced this. Uh, the CME four hours later was produced by a, a long duration C flare and not the filament. Yet it seems like Solar Ham and other people on the interwebs that claim to be specialists in this know better. So you can listen to them or you can listen to the facts. <laughs> Ace real time solar wind showing nothing but pathetic activity in our. Yeah. The telemetry is low. Solar wind is below 400. Anyway, nothing happening until the 12th, in my opinion. Now the models here showing the smack. And this is the ISWA signet streamer showing huge amounts of plasma. 
moving throughout our solar system. But if you come over to the annual spiral, it's showing absolutely nothing. And, and that's the difference between this is NOAA's prediction and this is NASA's prediction. Never a straight answer at NASA and completely adulterated information at NOAA. So NOAA is sh showing us NOAA information and NASA, who knows? It's, it's complete diachronous. It's positive, negative. I mean, it's one and says the other. It's crazy. Now, Starbucks is considering quitting Facebook because of hateful responses to its woke posts on social issues. Well, that's because you're frauds. And we all know that even if you say you're 100% renewable, it means that you're using coal fire power plants to power those electric cars and other shit. Starbucks, you're a fraud. Your $3 cups of burnt coffee can suck it. And I encourage all of you to go over to Starbucks Facebook website and social media sites and tell them to suck it on behalf of Diamond. Period. French soldiers warn of civil war in a new letter. Well, yeah, it's coming. And not just in France. Extraordinary discovery. Archaeologists find Neanderthal remains in a cave near Rome. Well, I once fought Clovis remains in a cave near Norristown which is highly equivalent because no one even knows about that discovery. And now the mainstream is reporting on this one where they're all going to steal the bones, gobble them up for bone soup. Fact check, VAERS data does not prove thousands died from receiving COVID-19 vaccines, except that the site is designed specifically to catalog all the data on deaths with vaccines. But it doesn't mean that it's actually real. Even though we're cataloging this information, it doesn't mean it actually happened, according to the people cataloging it. <laughs> Reiner Fulmich suing the powers that be for crimes against humanity. Good on you, folks. Keep it up. We need more of that. Now, the people who want to keep masking, even after they had 47 vaccines and they're all good, well, good on them. I certainly won't be putting on a face panty ever in my life, no matter what they say. Hey, hey. But there are certain groups of people that love the face mask. Guys don't gloat. They don't even catcall at me anymore. And I feel like I'm isolated in a world that I've been missing my entire life. This is the left-wing, psychopathic, sociopathic socialists called Democrats that live in America. And they love masks. Because not only are they not getting laid or dated, but no one even cares who they are. Isn't that amazing? This is a dystopian world of non-human contact where people live in some fantasy AI reality that they create in their head where they think they're important, they think they're successful, and they think that they're making important change in the world because they recycled their six pack plastic koozie or whatever the fuck they did. You know what I think? I think all these people should take a walk, a long, deep walk in the woods barefoot, burn thousands of tons of forest debris and embrace the goddess of earth that is called CO2. Shut up, Al. You have no idea what I'm talking about. May 26, 2021, total lunar eclipse of the blood moon. Many of you don't know about it, but it's just 14 day, 15 days, 4 hours, 28 minutes, and 52 seconds. Mark it away. Now, the only problem is it's a southern hemisphere hitter in the... Sh yes. West Coast will be, be able to see the beginning of it. Uh... Eastern Asia will be seeing the end of it. And only people in New Zealand and Australia will be able to see the totality of the event. Now, let's take a look at this amazing eclipse map and animation, which uh, totally is awesome. It blew my mind. And this is what's going to be happening just in 15 days. As the penumbral flexure point is shown in the dark. This dark region here is showing where the actual e eclipse will occur. And let's just move it back here. I don't, it's not functioning well. There we go. And here you can see the eclipse moving 
across the planet. Totality there and then re revealing. So if you're in Eastern Australia, you're going to get a great show. The Western U.S., you'll see the beginning. Eastern Asia, you're going to see the ending. And it's looking fantastic. Total lunar eclipse during the blood moon will be witnessed by less than 10% of the planet. So that's how spectacular that is. Now, seven cryptocurrencies under $2 that could be the next Bitcoin. Now, I just gave you that tip on Matic. A lot of you made 10, 20, 30% if you got out. Stay in Matic. I just bought another three, $500 tonight when it hit, I don't know, 81 cents. But I also dumped quite a considerable amount in ADA. I haven't owned a single piece of Cardano until tonight. But based on the research that I've just made and a lot of the other information coming in from alternative sources, Cardano at $1.61 tonight is a very special buy. It's our prediction here at the channel that the, this particular coin will hit $100 in 2022. So if you just put 50 bucks in on Cardano ADA at $1.60, you could be looking at five grand in one year. That's how amazing, well, these gains are. And just for an example, I bought a, a Ethereum Classic for $2 last year, three year, two years ago, and it's now worth $150. That's a return of 70X, not 70%. I don't even know what that is, 7,000%, something ridiculous. And you can do it too, so... ADA is my next pick. Ripple is overpriced. Dogecoin is collapsing and overpriced and overhyped. Never heard of VeChain. Stella Lumens, I own 50,000 of those. So if you didn't get in at 10 cents, 6 cents, 2 cents like I did, anything under 70 is a good buy. 70 cents. Anything under 70 cents is a good buy. Tron. Buy it, gobble it up now. I don't have it on any of my exchanges except for Steam it. So I think that's another good buy. BitTorrent, clearly a good buy. That is people sharing free stuff for free. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you've been lied to. And the average Joe libertarian, is the majority of them, 5 to 10% are now millionaires because they bought in to the cryptocurrency craze that was going to collapse but now it's going to be part of mainstream coming soon everybody's adopting it it's now being put up on mainstream um financial networks i mean we're talking it's listed on the stock market now are you picking it up i can't put it down hard enough so if you haven't bought matic yet and you're looking for a good buy i would say cardano below 170 will be a killer if you're willing to wait for a year with no fear well that could be a boom to knowledge be safe we love each and every one of you share this video share this knowledge make others as successful as we have become be safe we love you plant a seed learn how to grow food and throw your television out the window already hello no, 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 no.